Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Music City Prep Clinic, Nashville-based provider for prep and offering comprehensive sexual health services in an environment designed to be safe, professional, and shame-free. Learn more at musiccityprep.org. I'm Khalil Ekelona, and this is Nashville. Unless you've been under a rock for the past 50 years, you have heard hip-hop music from the old-school artists like the Sugar Hill Gang, the Beastie Boys, Run DMC, and salt and Pepper, to new school like J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Rhapsody, and Little Sims. Hip-hop and the art of emceeing in hip-hop production has grown and evolved. But where did it all come from? Who are the notable pioneers of hip-hop in Nashville? And what's up with the beats? Who makes them? And what is sampling all about? Now, last year, hip-hop celebrated 50 years of bringing the noise. But a lot of people are confused about the difference between hip-hop and rap music. Both include hard-snapping beats and lyricists rhyming words over the track. But for some who are considered themselves purists, yours truly is one of them, there is a very notable notable difference. So today we're going to explore two of the elements of hip-hop, beats, and rhymes. My first guest has been in the Nashville hip hop scene for decades, from releasing music himself to mentoring the next generation of artists. I'd like to welcome P.E. McCollum, aka Pal Shadows the General, to This Is Nashville. Pal, thanks for being here. Peace and love. Thank you, Khalil. Glad to be here. Peace, my man. It's really good <laughs> for you to be here. So, yes, sir. let me see. You are a Tennessee native, right? Yeah. So, briefly, tell me about your introduction into hip hop. Oh, man. You know, my introduction to hip hop was about uh, my earliest memories was playing football with the friends and hearing Houdini on 94.3 Chattanooga, Tennessee on radio. OK. And and I'm going, you know, they, these are older guys. So I'm looking up to them mm-hmm. instantly, you know, and I'm hearing them. They're older black and indigenous men. And I'm listening and I'm going, yeah, I, I like this. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. What mm-hmm. do you remember the Houdini song? Uh, friends. Friends, yeah, the classic song. Friends, how many as of us have them? Uh, okay, so tell me, you hear that as a young man, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Who were some of the artists that really first caught your ear and inspired you to pick up the pen and try your hand at writing and emceeing? All right, um, let me say peace and love first of all to the great spirit and to the ancestors. Um, yo, um, because you know hip hop is spiritual. Um, my my square or foundation in hip hop. Is LL Cool J first, mm-hmm. right? He inspired me to rhyme. Run, um, rock him, Eric B and Rock him. Paid in full album specifically. Beastie Boys, all right, and KRS One. By all means necessary. That's okay. my hip hop square. That's your square. <laughs> That's and everything my, else kind of branched my next out from tattoo. there. <laughs> all right, all right. Now you are an artist and MC yourself. Desc- describe your style of rhyming or MCing for us. My style around, see, my name is Pal, right? General of the House of Hip Step. So if you think of Pal, you think of, it's onomatopoeia. Hmm. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's energy, you know? Pow, bang. It's loud. Lyrical explosion. Mm-hmm. Lyrical explosion. That's my style. Okay. And, um, and consciousness, of course, because um, early on, I started out as a gangster rapper. A lot of people don't know that. I started out as a gangster rapper. Scarface was my first favorite MC, you know, mm-hmm. after LL Cool J. Mm-hmm. But um, I got consciousness. Um, I got knowledge of self after listening to Bob Marley. And um, that knowledge of self and that consciousness and awareness made me want to change my music because I realized that hip hop is about having victory over the streets. And I was succumbing to the streets okay. when I was 13, you know, 14. But listening to Bob Marley, listening to Public Enemy, and, and that stuff started really sinking in, the consciousness. And I wanted to have victory over the streets. And mm-hmm. that's what I want to encourage all my young G's and guys and girls listening right now to remember that hip hop is about having victory over the streets, not succumbing to the streets. Well, let's let, let's take a listen to one of your songs. Here is a clip from the song called I Don't Care, Power Shadows featuring AC the PD. You can call me a hater. I don't care. You might not call me later. I don't care. She can call me a player. I don't care. But you can never call me bro. Now. 1973 is when it all started with Cool Herc and others. Rocket House Party, South Bronx, NYC is like the Garden of Eden. 
Had to check it out. They could hardly believe it. Turntables, the lampposts, hard to conceive it. So fresh, the rest could hardly believe it. Only the best could do it. It was hard to achieve it. DJ and graffiti right breaking the art of the sea. Africa band by the Alana elements. The Zulu nation making games intelligent. Giving them skills that they could take for and represent. This made them relevant to communities they was in before grips and bloods was thugs. Violence was prevalent. Many neighborhoods, the detriment, but evident. Trying to kill the black Messiah, they brought the weapons in. That's why KRS said hip hop was heaven sent. I guess that you could say we was disco rebels. Grandmaster Hans took it to the next level. Innovating with cross, cross faded, gave us three blessings. Grandmaster Melly Mel gave us the first message. Mixed with the mix up, scratch with the scratches. Y'all biters can't write, you no match for the masters. Old Dirty told me I should bash all you guys. The leaders go to teach you. No, I ain't just the rapper. Act. I really like that, man. I <laughs> give thanks. Uh, that, that, tell me something about the track. It sounds like that was like live. Did you work with live musicians on that? Nah, nah, it's my man, AC the PD. Shouts out to AC the PD, the program director from Los Angeles. He has a format called Hip, a platform called HipHopPhilosophy.com radio. And he's a hip hop philosopher and a hip hop enthusiast. He made that beat. We have a project called Caught You Out There, available on YouTube and Spotify right now. Caught You Out There, okay. Power Shadows, AC to PD. And what I'm trying to say is that he he samples like like the old school, like the how they used to break beats, you know, live instruments, like really bringing it. Mm, that t in that song, yeah, you you it kind of paint out like a history, like a timeline yeah. of hip hop, yeah. how it developed, and you mention a lot of the foundational members, mm -hmm. the people who really got it going on. But you did something really interesting. You included other moments of lyrics from other hip hop songs and scratches. You used a lot of the elements. And pretty soon, listeners, I think sometime next month we're going to do another hip hop elements episode. But it focuses all on the DJs. Why was it important to you to add some of these other elements of hip hop into this song and give homage, pay homage to some of the predecessors and the pioneers? Uh, you know, that's kind of a hip hop tradition. I think, you know, if you think about um, uh, uh, other other songs that when they pay homage, it's like it's a thing in hip hop to to reference your favorite MCs. It's like it's a way it's it's, it's you know, many have done it. Um, and I just thought that this was, since I was giving homage to the foundation, I don't know a lot of songs out there that have 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 outlined the foundation of hip-hop just quite like I did in that one. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, talk about 1973 and all that. You know, that's, I, I haven't heard many songs like that. So I was like, I definitely got to pay homage to, you know, some of my favorite quotes and my favorite artists and, and, and bring that in. How, how important is collaboration to you between MCs? <sighs> collaboration is 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 it's like uh unity and unity in hip hop is very important cuz we build off each other it's energy like for instance um me me and bam we have a song you know under stress um um from the freedom riders album that's available on bandcamp that song it wouldn't have been the same without bam on it there's magic that happens when you collaborate mm. you know especially like you take the dynamics of a female with a male like me, and then you know how my voice is kind of, kind of grunt, a little scratchy, a little you know raspy, a little bit whatever. Yeah. And she comes with her soothing energy, and I love Bam's voice, you know. Yeah. So um, that that does something, you know, and I think that there's extra magic. Well, let's hear the soothing voice of Just Bam. She is an MC and writer who was featured on the MTV show True Life. I'd like to welcome Kina Ely, aka Just Bam. To this is Nashville, kind of. Just Bam, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Okay, so, so so grateful. Really great to have you. So tell me, pal, mentioned that you two have worked <laughs> together. How did you and pal meet in the hip hop community here in Nashville? Oh wow, um, we were both students at TSU, and uh, at the time, I had just came here from. I'm originally from DC, and I was a spoken word artist. I would do poetry and do spoken word, and we met. At the spot, I think it was the very first time. And then talk, and then you were in mental threat at the time Facts. when we first met. Yeah. And uh, talk. And we became friends just, just on the hip hop. Like we would always be at the same shows and kind of stuff. And then as we became more and closer friends, we was in the dorm one day and I was like, Yeah, I can't rap. He was like, What you mean? 
you you rap all the time. You always know a spoken word. You're talking. I'm like, no, nah, but that's not different. He was like, yes, it is. And Powell was the first person who took me with a piece of paper and wrote down numbers mm-hmm. and said, okay, this is how you do a, a, a rap song. Is da da da. You need twelve. You need sixteen bars. Then you need eight bars of a hook, mm-hmm. and then you need another sixteen bars. That I still write my songs like that today. Okay. And and he showed me how to take what I was saying put it in the line and then make the next line. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I learned how to write. So we have been friends over 20 years now. Like, and we still, when we wrote under stress, we were at my house and we were just sitting in the room together. We were like, we, we we heard the B from AC and he was like, yeah, MSA on that. That was MSA. MSA. And we sat there together and went back and forth. He would write his part. He'd say it. I'll write my next part. He'll say it. You know, we've always had that energy. And I think it's because, I respect him so much as an MC. Mm. What was the scene like here in Nashville at that time? It was like a family. It was like something that I wish the young kids had now because we had like a culture. It was like because we we had Click Universal, which you had Mental Threat. You had Utopia State. You had all of these different hip hop groups and artists and rappers and we would all come together once a week at whoever was doing an open mic everybody would support each other you know and i think the reason that was is there there wasn't you know a play we weren't allowed in the bmis and ascap festivals <laughs> but we broke in and one year they let us all on there remember it was all of us and it was just like a, a family, a unity. Okay, so briefly, briefly, tell me about that moment. So the venues in Nashville are not really recognizing hip-hop. Not and at all. And you said BMI and ASCAP and their festivals and showcases, no, we don't want hip-hop. But then they let you. And you said, you let us all come in. What happened? <laughs> and what was it that was, vibe like? BMI used to do this um, music conference every year. And they would have all these. I don't think they do it anymore. Yeah. But they would have open stages and people could perform. And you would get, you know, I, I say one of us because we were we were all like a family. Like, uh, I think Utopia State got to do it one time. But they never had a hip hop stage. And that one year, I, I can't remember what year it was, but they had a hip hop stage. It was in a small venue, but it was Utopia State, Mental Threat. At the time, I was in a group called Hip Hop Soul with Lena Fee and Heavy Set. Um, uh, I want Just One was in it. Like every underground hip hop artist, and we got like a, a. It was not a lot. It was like a ten minute set, but everybody brought a band. We had a live <laughs> band. We went back to back. Everybody was jumping up and down, and that was a time when you when you hit the stage, everyone came to the front. Mm-hmm. So no matter who was performing, no matter what was going on, we always supported each other. And if anyone had an opportunity to do something hip hop, like. At street at the African Street Festival, it didn't mm. matter if the city, you know, we would all show up and mm. go to the front of the stage and know everybody's lyrics and everything. It was okay. that kind of vibe. Now I understand that you worked on your craft, you honed your craft, but you got into battle rapping, yeah. which <laughs> is a very aggressive expression of emceeing. First of all, tell listeners to you what battle rapping is. Um, well, battle rapping is when you go against another person and the goal is to make jokes. You know, you want to out. I, I treat battle rapping a different way. I feel like you should out rhyme that person. You know, it's not just about calling them names and making fun of their outfit. You got to really like draw the crowd in, get everybody on your side, you know. And as a female uh, rapper going into battles, I was always the only female there. Like, mm. I can tell you multiple times where I was the only one there and no one wanted to battle me. No one wants to lose a battle to a girl. Okay. First of all, that's you don't want to, do you know, that. that's funny. That's interesting. Cause I was thinking that they didn't want to insult. Oh no, no, that's easy. That's easy. <laughs> okay. I, but that was my, that was my niche because I was the only female there. I already knew what they were going to call me. Mm-hmm. I already knew what the insults were going to be. They were going to be the same, the, the B word, you know, you know, things like that. They, I, But I always made sure I was dressed so, like, fly that they couldn't make fun of my outfit. Like, they would try to diss me. I, I did about it one time, and the girl was trying to, di- the, the guy was trying to diss me, but he kept giving me compliments because he couldn't do it. Like, I was just looking at him so hard, you know. I would always flip that because I, I know what you're going to say, so you're not— hurting my feelings because mm. everybody says that. Mm. But that was kind of like my thing. I was never insulted by 
you know, people calling me names. Okay. In many ways, you use the feminine divine to mm -hmm. defeat toxic masculinity. Yep. Yep. Within rhymes. Right. And if you look, if you look just sexy enough, you know, all the guys in the crowd are going to be like, oh, don't do that to her. Don't do that to her. <laughs> yeah. And now I don't spit my whole 16 and they, they ain't even worried about me insulting them. They just like, oh man, she's killing it. You know? Yeah. Okay. I want to hear a little bit of one of your songs. Here is Light Shine by Just Bam. Oh, one of my favorites. Sometimes I stare at the wall, and in the back of my mind, I want to be a rap star, but so far, I came close, had a few moments of shine, and I climbed a few ladders, now I'm back on my grind. I'm trying to get my all the time, pay my dues, since they let me in the game, yo, I just can't lose. My mother used to tell me that I dream too much, with my lips on the Dutch, you know, we're smoking sassy. I got my head in the clouds, but my feet's on the ground. My vision may be cloudy, but it's my focus now. I crack a smile sometimes, till my cheeks turn purple. My life is full circle, and I'm singing a miracle. I've been a lot of places, yeah, I did a lot of things. I got some real it's just down for my team. And we all got one vision, yo, it's getting that cream. And we let our light shine and follow our dreams. It's our time, we can make it. So let your light shine away. I really like that. That's smooth. Thank you. That is really <laughs> smooth. I like that. I like the track right there. It's got like that that broken rhythm that was made popular by Jay Dillo. Rest in peace. It is. It's influenced by that Philadelphia swing with the half step. Yeah. 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 yeah it's yeah. really smooth. Yeah. What was in your What was your state of mind as you were writing that song? Uh, well, that song, like, I really wanted to because I had been doing battle rap for so many years and kind of got a lot of confidence from that. I wanted to show people lyricism. And and it, and for me, that's one of my favorites because it's me sort of like pouring my heart out into my struggle of what it's been like trying to get through and be genuinely an MC and lyrical and, and conscious about what I'm saying in trying to be a rap artist, to mm. just, you know, just a pun. But I really just wanted everyone to just know my story, and that was the best way to do it. It was easy to write that song, and it was produced by um, Reverence Mitchell, and because I knew what I wanted to say, and like the first line uh, uh, in the back of my mind, I want to be a rap star. But so far, you know, that's true. Yeah. That was true in that moment. I had done so many great things, but I still was not, I guess. And, and now my mindset about that is different. But I had done all these great things and had all these great accomplishments, but I still hadn't broke through. Mm -hmm. If you're just tuning in, this is Nashville, and I'm your host, Khalil Lake Alona. We're talking this hour about two elements of hip-hop, beats and rhymes. You can always send us your comments at This Is Nashville. Now, my next guest has been working on his craft for quite some time now. I'd like to welcome Adele, a.k.a. Adeli, to the show. Adeli, thanks for joining us, my man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Now, like a lot of people, I understand your older siblings turned you on to hip-hop. How old were you when you first heard the music, and what song was it? So what really um, brought me into hip-hop was my brother introducing me to a song called Gin and Juice by Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I was eight or nine. Um, I had heard previous <laughs> yeah. rap music before that, but uh, nothing hit the spot like that. As soon as I heard that, I felt like an immediate connection. I was like, whatever this is, I have to be a part of this. What was it about Gin and Juice that came out? You're making me feel old because I was in college when that came out. <laughs> um, I think it was it was the beat, the vibe, um, just how smooth like Snoop's delivery was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just him being natural. So when did you start to MC yourself? Um, so... Basically, um, I started in high school. Um, I went to Staples and bought this program where I could like make music and produce it and uh, record on it and didn't think it was something that I was going to end up doing for like a long period of time up until this day. Uh, but that's that's where it started for me. Um, so, you know, it was a way for me to kind of express myself. I come from humble beginnings and the trials and tribulations of life early that was a way for me to kind of like express that and release that. 
and um, I just found it to be kind of meditative, and um, and I still use that today. Now, I'm sure as you're in high school working on this, getting good at it, you're sharing it with your friends. What was their reaction the first time you shared a song with them? Yeah, so um, I was excited. I made a song, and the beat wasn't great, but I was like, okay, I made a song. It can't be that bad. Uh, I let my friend hear it. Shout out to Rob. Uh, <laughs> let him hear it. And I said, hey, so what do you think? He's like, man, that was whack. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shout out to your man for honesty. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I appreciate that because that made me go hard. Um, I could have just given up right there and been like, yeah, maybe this isn't for me. That's right. I mm-hmm. said, that, that just means I have to step it up. So that's what I did. And I, I wrote, and to this day, I still write. I don't type my lyrics on a computer or phone or anything. I write it. So there's something about writing yeah. it. it's like you're casting it into the universe or something mm-hmm. like that so i have a picture where i sprawled all my uh lyrics all over a table covered the table and you can see all the imperfections you can see all the scratches where yes. i had too many syllables or whatever right and you scratch it out and write it again yeah exactly i still have rhyme books from when i was a kid like i don't throw away a rhyme book you keep them it's you like it, it's know. almost like your journal like people's diaries right it is. definitely it is. all right so adeli we're going to listen to some of your music here is world hop by Adele. Yeah, I'm in my 30s. Although my soul is a thousand. But who's counting? Enthralled by extravagance, navigating the labyrinths, formulating theorems, still you hear them like Pythagorean. Came a long way from Canal Street, haggling artificialities, never settled well in my abdomen. Tossed like a javelin, my thoughts unraveling, ever so distant, my mind commits to traveling. Like I dribble poorly, rehearse my versatility. After all, versatility's my first ability. I mentally built a facility, void of hostility. Why would I double up when it's time for a trilogy? Some pushing keys like Beethoven was. I was Steering clear, young and Persian like woven rugs since I was two. Jamming to the music, sampling acoustics. My microphone barely held up by bamboo sticks. It's world hop until the world stops. Voice of perpetual choir, you hear the pearl drive. They say that light travels faster than sound, but the presence of harmony gracefully sticks around. Which one means more? Brevity or longevity? The sound of hip hop is forever since like telepathy. They say that light travels faster than sound, but the presence of harmony gracefully sticks around. Which one means more? Brevity or longevity? The sound of hip hop is forever since like telepathy. Raised in West Nashville, a young cash billion. Thankful for I really dig that, man. Yeah. I like Thank that. You. The track and your flow, it, it it's one that makes one get contemplative and really think about, listen to what you're saying. Now, the song is called World Hop. Break that down for me. What do you mean by World Hop? So basically me and my team, I'm also part of a group called Heru Heru. And uh, we started this movement called Heel Hop back in 2019. Um, that was the name of our first album. And basically the idea behind that was the only way for hip hop to to continue to exist is if we heal it and if we heal ourselves through it um so heal hop if we want to heal the world we need two movements we need the heal hop movement we need the world hop movement um how it started uh, uh make it as concise as possible my uh partner in rhyme foundation mecca part of heru heru Shout out foundation mm-hmm. yes definitely um me and him would talk on the phone like 10 years ago and we saw we saw the state of hip-hop back then and we knew that it was just gonna continue to kind of go that route and we said well what are we doing just sitting here waiting for other artists to step up and uh you know t- uh, you know point out the things that we're not content with in, in this beautiful art um mm-hmm. how people outside of of the culture have like a a, a business uh, intention behind it and the, you know they're exploiting the art basically um, so we decided to make heel hop, um, and then you know I, I started uh, world hop uh, as well, and I, my first album was called World Hop. Okay, I mean, and hip hop is definitely a global phenomenon, not only in the music industry but the culture itself. And what you're saying to me, you and Foundation Mecca got together, as I'm sure you know, Powell, you and Just Bam recognized, and you kind of alluded to this hip hop and the direction it was going to was Mm -hmm. in a much more negative place. And to me, that feels like the difference between hip hop and rap music. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Rap music feels like something ready to package Mm -hmm. up, sponsored by Mm -hmm. some corporate Mm -hmm. entity, package it up (laughs) that leads more to a parting atmosphere. Let's talk real briefly about that. Yeah. I like to, I like to touch on that. The rap thing, the difference between rap and hip hop, hip hop, her infinite power helps oppress people. KRS one said that, 
Um, and I like that, you know, it's, it's like a, mm -hmm. it's, it's something to, 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 to love and take dear. Like Common said, I used to love her, mm -hmm. the divine feminine principle. Where is that in hip hop? Where is it? Okay. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's, 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 it's right now it's women are, you know, degraded mostly, right? A lot, a lot. And degrading themselves. It's not even men doing it. They, they're doing it. That's okay. very true. So but, <laughs> but the rap Continue. thing real quick, I just want to say the rap thing. When you wrap a gift and put it under a Christmas tree, as a rapper, that's something you could package and you can sell it. Mm. You can wrap it up and put it under a Christmas tree and you wrap up your gift. Hip hop is being an MC celebrating all five elements. You know what I'm saying? Celebrating the tradition of being a griot coming from the heart, speaking from the heart and mind of who you are truly and what you know. Now, I mm -hmm. want to talk about what you were saying about the, you know, hip hop has had a long, long history yeah. of uh, misogyny. Mm -hmm. A very long history that is really dealing with, right? But also, right now, it has been subjugating women in hip-hop to negative er images and stereotypes. But, just Bam, when you and I were talking before the show, you kind of feel like the women are taking over and doing that themselves. I, we have. there At some time, there was a shift. And I just want to say that, like, rap is something that you do. It is a skill that you have as an MC. Mm -hmm. I want to say that. Facts. So, Facts. But what I've seen, like, if you think about it, back when Luke and, and Easy e we were, they were crashing their records, breaking them in the streets because they were calling women names and subjecting women as property. But now, all, every female rapper now is doing that themselves. Their music is about making money, how to get over on dudes. You know, it's like, and then the, the costume and the, you know, the, how they present themselves. I, I feel like, where did we go from there? Because people want to say Little Kim, but like, let's be factual. Little Kim had bars. Little Kim came in in an era where women weren't Baby even was, wasn't even allowed to like be <clears throat> on those type of records. You you either have to be a Queen Latifah, a Moni Love, conscious. You know mm -hmm. they would accept that from you. Mm -hmm. Little Kim came in and spit game by rapping with Biggie lyrics. You got to remember that this. She was yeah, not she, Foxy Brown had Jay Z, A Z, you know, Nas, facts, people facts. who were lyrical and she was spitting bars. They weren't just subjecting themselves. They weren't selling sex with very little skills. They were they were selling their selling their skills. Yes. Essentially. Essentially in a sexy way. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. It's a really complicated issue. I'd love mm -hmm. to talk about it more, but we gotta take a short break. But later on in the show, we're gonna have you all back for the first ever freestyle session on Nashville public radio but next we're going to focus on beats and rhymes so we're going to say goodbye for now to pal shadows the general just bam and adeli will have you all right back funding for this is nashville comes from you our listeners and music city prep clinic nashville based provider for prep and offering comprehensive sexual health services in an environment designed to be safe professional and shame free learn more at musiccityprep.org I'm Khalil E. Colonna, and this is Nashville. Today, we are talking about two of the elements of hip-hop, MCing, which some may know as rapping, although, as we just heard, there is a difference, and producing the beats and rhymes that make up the music and culture. Now, before the break, we spoke with three local MCs. Now let's meet a local producer who has worked with some heavy hitters in the underground scene. I'd like to welcome Chris Jones, a.k.a. M. Slago, back to This Is Nashville. Slago, good to see you again. Brother, good to be here. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're talking hip-hop production. And most people, some people, I'd say, should know it as beat making. But there's a little bit of a difference. What's the difference to you between making a beat and producing a track? There's a lot of different elements there, right? So with production in itself, it's a larger uh, undertaking as opposed to just beat making. Beat making is samples or live, just live playing instrumentation, creating a sound, right? But production is having that sound, pairing it with the right MC, um, the little intricacies that come with recording, uh, making sure all those things fit into place. Like, that's the bigger piece to it and the difference between the, difference between the two. How did you start producing? Uh, for me, it was... I wasn't really pleased with the way I was hearing music going, or hip-hop specifically going. And instead of complaining about it, I figured I'd contribute. Mm. That's an interesting take. Yeah. 
You know, a lot of people just sit up and complain and wait and wait and wait. You said, forget this. I'm going to teach myself. Yeah, man. And grab some things. So who are some of your influences in, in production? Oh, man, there's a lot. But let's run down a couple. Jay Dilla off top, off the rip. Jay Dilla, uh, Pete Rock, Mad Lib, uh, DJ Scratch, who I think doesn't get mentioned enough. Easy Mo B doesn't get mentioned enough. Um, man, that's a long list. Extra, extra, extra P, large professor. Mm -hmm. Man. Even bringing down a little bit more, uh, like Black Milk Odyssey, you know, cats like that. Newer, some newer contemporary yeah. guys out there. Now, okay, tell me, talk to me about the equipment, the equipment that you use. Do you use just like one program? Some people use a computer. Some people have like a standalone sampler. Yeah. Some people have a mix and match. What do you like to get down on? Uh, my weapon of choice is FL Studio, affectionately known as Fruity Loops, which Ninth Wonder brought wonderfully into the hip hop realm, right? But I started there, uh, but from there I've reached out and, and branched out to Reason, uh, the MPC 1000 for a little while, now the MPC Renaissance, and even uh, Native Instruments Machine. Okay. Now, we're going to hear one of your songs that you did with a very popular underground and independent artist, Homeboy Sandman. This is Musician by M. Slago and Homeboy Sandman. Yeah. Dedicating this to... Young female, I'm sure man no harm. Asked you what I did, I told her I was a musician. She said, what kind of music you make? I said, I make hip hop music. She said, oh, you mean you're a rapper? Next interviewer asked how long I've been in the game. After work's gonna have to walk with a cane. I'm not on that plane. People ask why I ain't walking this way. Nowadays, I just be walking away. I'm not trying to waste. And instant trying to explain how I'm different from other rappers as far as they traits. Like there could never be a logical answer other than the music we make. And when I'm dead and gone, my music will remain. We are not in a race. I don't hold a conventional view. I'm not concerned with being the best and being better than you. I'm concerned with being better than me. At the highest levels, that's the only better with even trying to be. This is the protest that the vultures evoke. As a spokesman for the culture, that's considered a joke. This ain't show, but son, I shoulder the load. Take a gander at the winners, find the glamour and the glitter that's shown. I'm a musician. This sound listen. Different. This is. I'm a musician. This sound listen. All right, that beat is crazy. I love that track. Thank you, man. Yes. Okay, so did you use a sample to make that track? Yes, I did. Can you say what sample you used? Of course not. You know, that's, that's Cardinal <laughs> Sin, brother. No way. No way. I want to try to get you hooked up. But I, I do want to talk a little bit about sampling in hip-hop. All right. There's, you know, sampling in hip-hop is where you grab a pre-recorded sound, not mm -hmm. even necessarily a piece of music, and you incorporate it into a new piece of sound and art and music. What's your approach to sampling? Because some folks think that it's stealing, it lacks talent. Um, they feel like it's stealing art and it, it's a cheap way to make music. How do you feel? I disagree. It's simple and plain. I think um, sampling has has taken on this this embodiment of it has to be taken to the point that you made. I think it was really great. It doesn't have to be a pre-existing song that you pull from. It could be anything that's pre-recorded, whether that's a drum kick, whether that's a snare, whether it's a hi-hat, whether that's a key, the C key on a on a piano, all those things that have been pre-recorded and are made available for you to use, that's a sample. So without samples, if you're not playing live, there is no hip hop, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to expand it out into the part of it of sampling, which is taking pre-existing songs, even with that, man, in, inspiration strikes from anywhere. It could be birds chirping, it could be your baby crying, it could be a high five from your homie. Um, you know what I mean? It could be a hug. All of those things, they spark something. The same thing happens with sound. There's a vibration that happens. There's an energy that happens. And if it happens to come in the form of one distinct sound or if it comes in the form of a collection of sounds into a pre-existing song, why not use it? Where do you grab most of your samples from? Are you vinyl head? Do you go on YouTube? I'm an absolute vinyl guy. It's, mm -hmm. that, it's that tangible piece, man. It's, it's the physical. It's the transfer, right? When you feel it, it's saying we talked. Well, I've talked to people before about, like, when you cook. Mm -hmm. You can tell when the food made, is made with love, right? Like they washed the greens, they shucked the peas, you know, your, your aunt and your sister and your mother was in there like peeling the potatoes together. So you feel it, it's different. And I think the same thing happens with music. When you actually can touch the vinyl and pull the music that way, the energy that comes off of that, 
I think that's real. Okay. Now, my next guests are coming off of a fresh new project. MC Brian Brown and producer Carmine Profits have just released BB Gone Profit, and the album has made them the artist of the month at our sister station, WNXP. Brian Carmine, welcome to This Is Car- This Is Nashville. Thank you for having us, man. Thank you for so sure. much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Really appreciate you all being here. Okay, so first, you know, tell me a little bit about this project you all just finished up. Brian. Okay. Uh, this was what I like to call an album about making it count in more ways than one. Hmm. Um, just kind of like an inward and outward glance of society's stance and my stance on money, how we treat it, how it uh, helps and suffice us as like individual artists and as people and also how it kind of like dilutes our mindset and things of that nature but also it's just a lot of really good rapping well Carmine tell me how did you both come to work together for this project um I actually did a random remix during COVID actually of a video he had already put out of a song he already had out called Desires mm-hmm. and I was doing a lot of remixes at that time so I think this is like 2020 so I, I, I did the remix real quick along with other remixes I was doing at the time and I just sent it to him and this is before we even had met each other so I just kind of sent it to him out of the blue and he was just really impressed and since then we've been talking about working and then eventually around 2021 or something like that 2022 something yeah, 22. Yeah. something like that yeah we we uh, linked up again we were on the same bill at a show at Tim Roof and we uh, chopped it up after the show and uh, talked about getting in the studio together and then Started cooking up from there. Started cooking up. Well, let's listen to one of the things y'all cooked up. We're going to listen to the track Kurt Wagner from the album BB Going Profit by Brian Brown and Carmine Profit. Yeah, yeah. Been on this move, man. Lately, I've been night calling, moon walking, shot calling. How you feeling? Rather out of this world if I do say so. Coming up, hold it down, look around, left and right. Who with me? Couldn't name you a soul. Hitting up anywhere. Got it how we had to. Ain't no looking back for everything ago. That man on fire, still the coolest in the room. Almost like a storm brewing. Whether they ready or not, what a way to make an interest. Rain, sleet, hell, snow. We gon' keep you interested. Glance the masses for a sec. You see these folks is not impressive. It's really been regressing, but for now I digress. Had to get that off my chest. Them and all that weak. They exalting high praise for a lot of things, quite exhausting. Don't even got a lot of kick it dog. Let's get it off that. Please flick your a million miles away. Bitch, catch my drift. Tokyo swerve flow. Buckle up, there he goes. Shifting gears, slow your roll. Oh no, no. Move if you ain't finna keep up. Check it steady, slipping, and my time will be luxurious. Not that they're so serious, so no need to be curious. So wonder what the motive is. I'm finna be golden. Everything's golden as of late, the way they've been going. They dream in the pockets plumper than Jill Scott. I've been night crawling, moon walking, shot calling. How you feeling? Rather out of this. That's fresh. Thanks, man. That Thanks, is really man. fresh. Thanks, man. <laughs> now, now, talk yeah. to me about the process of y'all working together because something that has happened is a, a single MC. Like yourself, Brian, mm-hmm. will go out and say, I want to do an album. I'm yeah. doing uh-huh. a new project. I'm shopping for beats and tracks from everybody. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And so they, they, I'm sure you've done it too. And these albums are good, but there's something different about making an album with one producer. You all have been, you know, admirers of each other's work, but you got into the studio to create this vibe. And as I'm listening to it, the track that Carmine produced and how you're riding on it. You're a talented MC. You'll find and ride the beat. But to me, it felt like there was an energy in the room yeah. when you all yeah. were writing and recording. Talk to me about that. Well, I mean, for me at least, um, I think the beautiful part about the way that we created this album was, and before we even start, before we even started recording any songs, it'd be like a, like a, like a like a check in or some like friend type of situation. Like, hey, how you doing? You good? What you been listening to? What you been working on? How's life? This, that, and the third. And then from there. He's going through four or five beats. And then I finally decide on one based off, like, the mood and the conversation we had. So it was never, like, rapper. Well, of course it was rapper and producer making project together, but it was never the intention of making this full-fledged project. It was two artists, just engineers of sounds who really admire each other's work, kind of really learning about one another and then deciding, hey, let's just go ahead and 
you know, take what we learned, put it in the pot, mix it up, and bada boom, bada bang. Nice. I always thought that was really fun about this whole situation. Okay, Carmine, yeah. do you do you wish that more artists would have that energy and that bond that you and Brian have? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. I, I think, um, especially as a role of a producer, like how we were talking about beat making versus producing earlier, was uh, that's one of the elements I'd, I'd say that comes with producing is, you know, anyone can make beats, we can all make beats as producers, but to get in with the artists and to really create the vibe and to have those type of conversations about life, what are you listening to, what movies did you watch, and all those things. Mm -hmm. And then to play, you know, certain beats that you've made and to create a certain type of energy that would make Brian or whoever artists want to write what they want to write to go in the booth and lay down the verses and hooks, how, how it sees fit from the energy. So I would say like that even just in terms of producing, that goes a long way in terms of just even creating an energy. Nice. Yeah. Did you sample anything for that song? That Yeah, that one I did sample. You sampled. All right, so I, I want to ask this to you and Slago. A lot of songs sound the same these days, and mm -hmm. cats are sampling. Is there a lazy way to sample? I think yes, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be good. Because okay. cause a lot of some some of my favorite beats, and I'm sure a lot of this goes for a lot of listeners of music, some some of those beats, I'm telling you, sadly, or it could be sadly, it could be good, but they, they were made in five to ten minutes, some of them, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, I always say this about sampling is, you know, if it made it easier to make good music, then everyone would be good, and that's just simply not the case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So you really got to be creative at the end of the day. What is it about the ear, Slago, that, that people have to have when they're approaching making a beat using samples? I mean, I think it's just there's a there's a gift. You know what I mean? You look at that in any, any form of art. Like, anybody can write. Anybody can sing. Anyone can produce or dance or whatever. But I think that there has to have a certain innate ability um, to tap into something different when you're doing that thing. I think it's the same thing with production. Like, you have to have a certain ear. You got to be a little off your rocker even. You know, like, some of the most brilliant people in the world are considered to be maniacs or geniuses, depending on which way you look at it. Yeah. I think it's the same way with production. All right. All right. I want to thank you both for being here. Many thanks to Chris Jones, Mr. M. Slago, and Carmine Profits. We are going to make room for the MCs to come in because when we come back from break, we are going to have the first ever Cypher on Nashville Public Radio where the MCs take to the mic and spit some fresh rhymes. Hey, if you're of a certain age, be like old school. Get your tape decks ready to record this segment. It's going to be fun. You can join the conversation by tweeting us at This Is Nashville. We'll be right back. I'm Khalil A. Colonna, and this is Nashville. We've been talking about two of the elements in hip-hop, music, and culture, the beats and the rhymes. Now we're about to do a first for Nashville Public Radio. We're going to have a freestyle cypher. That's where the MCs gather to share their skills. It also happens with dancers, DJs, and producers, but now it's all about the rhymes. A little bit about freestyling before we begin. Most folks think freestyling is coming off fresh off the top of your head, a raw form of improvisation. And it is that. But there's also a form of freestyling where a person recites or spits a rhyme that is no no one has ever heard before. And you have some of the best folks in town. So listeners, you are in for a treat. DJ Sleepy Snail, who's on the board. Let's give us track number one for us to freestyle to. We've got Pal Shadows the General, Just Bam, Ah Deli, and Brian Brown here to rock some stuff up. Hit us with the track. Whoever wants to go first, oh, y'all can get into it. Popped it off with Shook Ones. Shook Ones. Yes. Oh, man. Yo, who yes. first? Who uh, said it? I said it off, y'all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. For Nashville. Yo, Antioch, downtown. Yo. Uh, I get love from the Ville area where I, I, I get love from the Ville area where I go. The Ock downtown, out east and out north. I get love <laughs> from the Ville. Ain't pal. I've been making tracks and hits. I ain't bragging, but I ain't a new jack for sh. And if I had a cool meal for every track I spit, I'd be a billionaire out this chick. <laughs> 
This is an introduction like, how are you? Didn't know about the pal fam, now you do. Cause I'm a vet of the lyrical game. I guess it's a spiritual thing. I will you with chemical flames, a threat to your physical frame. I'll make your posse in the hood get their hands up. I'm sending this to my broke peoples that came up. I'm coming up like tomato plants. The black Spider-Man 3, I come and invade your planet, dang it. Just to give you stepping stones like the metamorphs. Real rapper set it off, girl say yes, of course. They call on universal pal with the universal style. Karma suture with the mic, bam, go now. Oh, yeah, bam. Wow. Okay. Boom, boom. That was fresh. I was tired. Just bam on the one, on the one coming through. I had to get the headphones on my head so I could spit lyrics in the microphone over I'm dead. Mike saved my life and the hip hop is in me. I grow in the style and it's not real friendly. Sometimes it's cold and sometimes it's hot. And sometimes you always gotta blow up the spot. But we ain't talking about weapons of mass destruction. Talking about spitting lyrics of destruction. Just bam on the mic one time. Yo, it shook one. Yo, I got to spit this rhyme. It's the fight of my life and I'm always in the fight because I'm spitting off the dome and you know it's coming right. I don't know what I'm gonna say before I spit it. I gotta rumor myths and coming back and hit it. Remind me again that I cannot curse because this is Nashville live in the hip hop verse. We on 93 <laughs> double P N double P L N public radio station. Had to yeah. get my flow back, yo, that's how it began. So you see what I did there? I flipped it back again. So I had to freestyle, so I broke it down again. Whenever you got to catch your breath, you just pause. Take a deep breath. I had say, hey, all y'all. Oh, did I spit out a curse? Nah, I think <laughs> we can do it. The FC don't make it hurt. I passed the microphone to my man to my left before I get in trouble when they put me off the show. Yes. <laughs> okay. That up. was fresh. We got another check. Okay. 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 But let's get uh, our right, sleepy snail. Get us with, hit us with track five right here for Brian Brown to do some fresh uh, rhymes. This is so much fun. Track yo. five. Track five. <laughs> Let's track five. We went from one to five that fast. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I got something. Uh, R.I.P. to M.L. Doom. Hey. What these folk know about BB really in O T H I N G except I'm O U T E A S T N A S H V I double L E till it's over. Hate to spell it out for you, thought I told you. Ace space is back on deck, how would you think I fold, bruh? Hand we was dealt wasn't always the greatest, but me and mine trying to get a grip so know the game and status books. Make sure your partner on the same page. Read Rainbow theme song, I can do anything. Take a look, don't let first impressions leave you second guessing. Third time might not come around, please don't miss your blessing. Lesson. Take that how you wanna. Word was brought to you by life and good marijuana. Big step and still moving. We've been on the system. Dot eyes. Long as I remember Ben popping my um, best rapper alive. If you didn't know, finna take it to a level that's gonna be real hard to ignore. Both around my way, acted dumb and tried to avoid it. They trying to leave me at the chat like somebody with an Android. They don't wanna see no green. Well, I can't relate. Mob good to see no green. Gone and grab a plate of the soul food. I've been dishing for a second. We gon' get there in a minute, baby. Time is of the essence. Believe me. Nice. 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 <laughs> All right. CB Snail, let's get track four so we can get Adeli on the mic. Ah, track Deli. four. Hey, Ru, hey, Ru. Yes. Clap your hands in this place. Ooh. Come on. Adeli on the mic. The villa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Ru, hey, Ru in this. Hill hop to the wheels pop. Uh, yeah. Yo, half you locusts like the focus to break from the mass hypnosis. Must wipe ferocious. I'm supposed to boast and be braggadocious. Have something to state when you jump to the plate. When it comes to debate with chumps, I get pumped to the flake. I have no time to talk or quibble with chalk and scribble. Your flock is fickle as you mock. I rip the rock and dribble. Mm. Step in my boots, Persian pride. Respect to my roots. Your time is up. Hours on. Your seconds minute. I'm mad exclusive. Rev up my rascals that bag the boosty. Your style been mass produced from Alaska to Massachusetts. I urge jerks with my Persian Amina. Heard they worship Athena, parts of Bosnia. Hurts of Gavina, bringing the farsi flavor straight to Canarsie. Bodegas and pastas get lost and get tossed across the equator. I'm like the sun because I keep returning. It burns deep when I preach my sermon, but it's true. The truth is to be determined. Word wow. of mouth. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get in one. I'm going to get in yeah. one. Okay, Yo, what you got? I can start. Yo, K, what you got? She going to start it over? Okay, word. Here we go. K, where you at? Yeah. All right. 
See, I can start by claiming I'm the best. Whip out my huge ego as I holler fresh to death. Brag on spending dollars, turning mollies on the meth. So long as the beats banging, y'all couldn't care less. Yo, it's no wonder why some of y'all are depressed. Hit the gram for the weekend. That's releasing all your stress. I'm just speaking from my chest. I got to get it off. I was feeling all compressed, and that was leading to a cough. Hey, yeah, no thank you. I don't use that with flu. But I ain't rapping gavels if you choose to care too. See, we could travel in the same pair of shoes. Pay the same share of dues. We could even share a muse Ooh. to each their own. You know, doing what you do is connection shine bright. I illuminate the clues. Ooh. Now ruminate the view and might incite something new. This is a change in my pocket insight times two. Okay. Uh, skeptics look me up and down like, who are you? Well, I could get my resume if that'll help you through, man. Because I agree with that categorized designate. My parents said when you speak the truth, resonate. Okay. Cabal to hesitate. Others are meditating. Mm -hmm. If you spit it straight, they may nominate you for head of state. Yeah. I fade, I can't escape half of the time. If I'm a give a stump speech, well, I'm a drafted in rhyme. Come on. Yo. I want to thank all y'all. I want to thank Yo. my guests. Yeah. My guests today. Yeah. I want to thank Pal Shadows the General, Just Bam, Adeli, Brian Brown, Carmine Prophets, and M. Slago. These are just a few of the talented and notable hip hop heads in Music City. Thanks to you all for being here. And as we say in hip hop, y'all, one love. All right, and thanks to you for tuning in this hour. This is Nashville as a production of Nashville Public Radio. Today's episode was produced happily by yours truly. It was directed by our senior producer, Tasha A.F. Lemley. Our technical director and board operator is Liv Lombardi, a.k.a. DJ Sleepy Snail. The masterminds behind our theme music are Lorange and Namir Blade. Special thanks to all the legends of Nashville hip-hop and the pioneers who have paved the way. You can listen back at thisisnashville.org or wherever you get your podcasts. And the conversation doesn't end here. Tweet us at This Is Nashville. Find us on Instagram and tell us what you want from our show by filling out our quick survey online. This is Nashville. I'm Khalil Ekelona. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. And be good to each other. <laughs>